All right, Caleb Barney with Russell Real Estate here. This video is going to be geared more toward uh, stats nerds uh, like myself. So I'm going to go over um, new listings data, uh, active listings data, and then home price data for the areas that you see shaded in blue here. So this area right here, uh, kind of a rectangular shape almost, um, is the primary areas that I serve. So I apologize, I'm working from home today. Um, so I live in Strongsville, grew up in the Medina area, and basically what we're looking at here as I exit out of this is we're first going to look at the number of new listings comparing year over year uh, for, you know, all of our data through September of 2023 versus all of the data last year. Um, as you can see, number of new listings, we actually ended last year very, very slowly. Um, the housing market in general, uh, when we're talking about the national housing market, which it's questionable to say that there is such thing, but they say the national housing market hit a or entered into a recession on June 15th of 2022. And if you remember, uh, the 30 year fixed rate uh, mortgage was averaging about 3.1% to start the year in January 2022. And it actually peaked last year in the last week of October uh, and leading into November, we ended up hitting 7.37%. So once that happened, that really just killed the market um, because we already will, uh, will experience seasonal adjustments uh, where, you know, typically there's going to be the most amount of listings will start ramping up in late, uh, you know, or I'm sorry, in spring. So it'd be, you know, March, April, May, June, and July are typically our big months as far as number of new listings. And that makes sense because A, weather's nicer. B, a lot of people are moving, whether they're moving up because they have kids, whether they're downsizing because kids are gone now. But either way, a lot of uh, times people will try to list their house to have it sold before the school year starts. And then once we hit October, typically, that's when we would start seeing our listings really start falling. Uh, maybe not quite to the same extreme that we saw last year, though. Um, that being said, you know, when you look at 2023 versus 2022, new listings has been our primary issue and that's why house prices have actually still stayed elevated, even though as of this recording, so I'm recording October 19th, yesterday we hit 8% for the uh, national average for the 30-year fixed rate mortgage. Um, so that's a 23-year high. And um, that being said, even though it killed the market last year, we're still seeing these houses sell very quickly. Um, and they're just not able to stay on the market. So just wanted to kind of go over, you know, the new listings data. If you look at this year compared to last year, literally every single month we've had fewer listings. And again, that kind of goes back to, well, people, if they don't have to sell, they're not going to, um, you know, you have your, your big reasons for people moving. It's typically going to be, you know, death, um, new babies, so they, they, they call it the Ds, death, diapers, so new babies, uh, divorce, diamonds, so people getting married, uh, and then relocation for jobs and whatnot. Of course, if you want to, uh, you know, buy or sell, um, you know, a lot of times people will sell investment properties when the market's so hot, but a lot of people just, they don't want to get rid of their 3% interest rate um, and trade it in for something at 8% right now. And traditionally, a seller is also a buyer because they're not selling their primary residence to become homeless or to rent. They're trying to move into something else. So that's why we're seeing the new listings down this year. 
And when we compare it to basically the last 10 years data, you could see literally every single month. So we'll just go look at September so we're not going cross-eyed here. But September we had you know, just under 1150 for our listings in 2023. That's actually the lowest amount uh, of any month or of any year, I should say, dating back to when I could pull records or data, which is 10 years from our MLS. So other than that, you know, people thought that last year we had uh, a low amount of new listings in September. Well, that was low compared to, you know, the three years prior to it. But this year, we're even lower than that by an additional 10% almost. So that's why uh, there's just not a lot out there. And again, you could see these spikes, you know, your, your peaks and valleys and everything like that for our seasonal adjustment, just because there's always going to be more listings in the, you know, the middle of the year, your May, June, and July, as I mentioned previously. So that's just the number of new listings. What about the number of active listings? So how many of these houses are staying around, basically? Because a new listing just means that you put a for sale sign in the yard. An active listing is a property that is currently for sale and not under contract, and it's not sold. So when we're looking at active listings, same thing. We'll just go over year-over-year -year data first. You can see, again, the active listings actually bumped up relatively speaking to how many new listings there were in November and December last year. And it stayed elevated in the first quarter of this year where we had more active listings or inventory available um, to start the year this year compared to last year. And then once we, once we hit April, that all started to change. We basically had, uh, you know, we thought that inventory was growing and once the, the spring and summer months started hitting, um, even some more people listing uh, their house for sale, those new listings were getting swallowed up at a quick rate. And that's why we could see the number of active houses listed for sale this year compared to last year are down significantly. So especially the last three months, we were looking at almost 1,700 listings that were available or houses that were available in July of 2022, as opposed to 1,250 in July of 2023, um, you know, 1,630 versus 1,322 for August, and then 1,709 for September in 2022 versus 1,434. So new, or I'm sorry, the active listings increased or started increasing that first quarter of this year, but then it has actually gone back down. And that's why we're still seeing a supply side issue, uh, which is keeping house prices elevated. Again, this is just the historical data. You could see the active listings dating back from January uh, 2014. Yes, we have our seasonality. That's why we have our roller coaster looking graph right here. Um, but we never ended up going back up. Starting with the pandemic, we were expecting to see, okay, active number of listings was going to grow again, but that just wasn't the case. We hit new lows, new lows, new lows. And that's why when we're looking at active listings here, once again, we're at basically all-time lows, um, at least from the data that we can, can track uh, dating back 10 years here. And that is the same. I listen to Housing Wire Daily, Logan Motoshami. He looks at the national statistics, and he said that basically we're at all-time lows nationally for houses that are listed for sale. So when you're looking at not that many houses listed for sale, yes, buyer demand has been hurt by increasing interest rates, but there are still able and willing buyers out there that are propping up this market. Um, and I honestly don't see house prices coming down anytime soon. Um, I could see them leveling off to be sure just because of affordability issues, but I don't see house prices dropping dramatically unless there's a job loss recession in our area. So again, we're looking at sale price average. 
Um, just keep in mind, sale price is a lagging indicator because most sales, uh, they'll take 30 to 45 days to close. So if you remember, you know, November and December last year were crushed because we peaked our interest rates in October of last year at 7.375. And then we saw home prices don't go down there. We actually saw it go down year over year in January 2023 compared to January 2022, which hasn't happened very often recently, a year over year decrease. But then you see that rebounds pretty quickly uh, for most of 2023, uh, with the exception of one month, which was a, more of an outlier. So you can see February is up, March is about the same, April's up 15K. May was down 15K, which was a little interesting to see because this is the average, not the median. And then uh, you go back, you're up 10K almost for June, up 15,000 for July, up 11,000 for August, and then up almost 11,000 or almost you know a little over 10,000 in September as well. So home prices, like I said, they're staying resilient and that's just because there's such low supply. Everything is a supply and demand equation. And when there's more demand and you know that demand outweighs that supply, then you're going to see home prices stay strong. Um, it's not like we saw a couple of years ago where home prices were or were homes, I should say, were selling, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars above asking and you had ten offers, but now if the home is priced right, you're still typically seeing, you know, two to three offers on that on that property. Um, again, if it's priced right. So we're looking at basically just the uh, the data, you know, the historical data b dating back 10 years. September of last year, like I said, 287, uh, whereas we're just over 297 this year. Uh, in 2021, it was 263, 2020, 244, 2019, 210. So that's the, the awesome part about real estate. And I'm not here to say that your home value is always going to go up. We can see clearly that's not actually the case. Year over year, typically it does go up, but real estate is cyclical and there's no guarantee of that. So when people ask me if now is a good time to buy or sell real estate, I usually say it depends because it depends on your life circumstances and your situation. If, for example, you want to move or you need to move, you can afford to move. Um, so make sure that you're pre-approved and you're willing to make that payment as well. Um, if you know you're going to be in the area for the foreseeable future and you're not going to have to sell within one to three years or so. And if you have a, a stable job, I'd say, you know, if you can make those payments and you feel comfortable with it, then go for it. Um, and you really like that house and you really uh, want to move. Sure. Go for it. That's what life is here for. You're meant to live. Um, so as long as you're not stretching yourself and you're not putting yourself in a bad financial position, then now could be a great time to buy. And the reason for that is because interest rates are so high and because we're heading into the winter months, you're probably going to have less competition from other buyers because a lot of people um, who are kind of fringe buyers, they're pressing pause right now. You know, maybe they don't want to uproot their kids from, uh, you know, in, in the middle of the school year. Maybe they don't want to move in the winter. Maybe they literally just can't afford to buy anymore because of where interest rates are. You have fewer buyers out there that are competing against the same house um, that you were potentially. So that's great. And then the other thing is people who are selling right now are typically doing it for a reason as well. Because if they could help it, ideally, they would like to list their home in the spring, uh, not heading into the winter in Northeast Ohio. So with fewer buyers, maybe that house sits on the market a little longer, or maybe there's just not as much activity as they were hoping for. And if that's the case, then you might actually be able to have a lot more leverage or negotiation power when working uh, with that buyer there. So it could be a good time to buy. It could be a good time to sell. 
It all just depends on your situation. And for that, I would always say just talk with a trusted real estate advisor, somebody that's in the area that knows the statistics of your area and, um, and make an informed decision because that's all you can do. So if you have any questions about Northeast Ohio, um, you know, the Cleveland housing market is my specialty, uh, the suburbs, especially the West side, uh, through Medina County, parts of Lorraine, Summit, Wayne, and Lake counties as well, um, reach out to me. I'd be happy to have a conversation with you. No obligation. You don't have to sign anything to work with me uh, because that's not how I, I do business. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'd be happy to help out. Otherwise, have a great day.